Buying a new house and a brand new construction is very exciting, but there are a lot of decisions that you are gonna have to make throughout the process. And if you go into it knowing about these decisions that you're gonna have to make, which ones are gonna be beneficial, which ones are gonna be detrimental, those are the things that we are here to do and provide you the information for on this channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Bryant. I'm a real estate agent in the DC metro area. In today's video, we are going to cover the things that you should be doing when, you are up to, when you're building a new house, the things that you should be doing for updates. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so the first thing you must do when you are buying a new house is you should upgrade the countertops. What are the things that people look at first when looking at photos of the house? They're gonna look at the kitchen and they're gonna look at the bathroom. That's just a fact. If you do not update those countertops, they are gonna be very generic. They're maybe gonna look like, you're gonna have a brand new build in 2024 that looks like it was built in the early 2000s. They're just not using the latest and greatest uh, products and the best products and it's gonna look dated from day one. So again, definitely update the countertops to the most that you're able to afford. Obviously, there's a limit. Some of the higher end countertops, maybe you don't need to get into those, but definitely go away and get away from the basic ones um, and upgrade to at least some kind of granite countertop or you know something along those lines, some kind of a stone, because it will add value to your house and it'll make your kitchen look very up-to-date and very nice. All right, so the next thing that you should be updating are your kitchen appliances. So just like kitchen countertops, kitchen appliances are really gonna bring your kitchen together and make it look nice. So if you have stain nice stainless steel appliances, whatever the latest trend is, you get those installed instead of maybe the matte black, uh, the cheapest ones that they, the builder is gonna put in there. If you just do that work up front, it's gonna cost, it's gonna save you money instead of, you know, because everything's custom fitted into place, you know, the kitchen, you know, the like dishwasher, the refrigerator, all those things are kind of custom built to a certain size to for a certain product. So just do it right from the first from the from day one, especially like the stove, you know, and maybe the hood of the stove. Those things, you know, it, it, they're very custom fit in there and they, they blend with everything else in the kitchen. So just do those up front. I'm telling you, it's gonna you're going to regret it if you if you don't update the appliances. The only thing I would say. If you don't like any of the packages that they're offering, tell them to just not even put anything in there. Maybe save yourself a couple thousand dollars by just having all those left blank. Then you can go out after you take ownership of the property and go find your own appliances, have them put in, you know, go buy them at Best Buy or Home Depot or whatever and have free delivery, maybe free installation. That'd be fantastic. But just make sure you don't just use the basic, especially when it comes to the appliances. All right, so the next thing you should be doing when you're building a new build, the upgrade you should get, are the lighting and the electrical options. So light matters. It, you can walk into the nicest property, and if the lighting just doesn't support the area, there's not enough of it, it's dark, it's dim, it's just not gonna look as great. So I'm always, always for is do as much lighting as possible, especially recessed lighting. You can have a dimmer switch, but the more the better. I mean, obviously there's an extent, but for, for you know, for the most part, the more the better. The more lighting you have, the better the space is going to look. Even if it's not, you know, the most pristine. It's not a five million dollar home. Lighting can make it look like a five million dollar home compared. You, you know, you can have a five million dollar home that looks like a ten thousand dollar home if the lighting's just not that great. So lighting matters. Make sure you get it in it because it's very hard to put in after the fact it's possible but it's better just to do it up front get it over with it's going to save you money it's going to make the space look that much better a couple other things to consider when putting in electricity in a house is have the wiring for example the fans in bedrooms you may not want ceiling fans in all your bedrooms from day one but have them put the junction box have them put the wiring in place so when you are ready it's already there all they do is put a little cap on top of it um, if, I'm sure you've seen that in other houses that you've been to. Uh, there's just a cap over over the uh, over the box, and as soon as you're ready to mount a light to it, it's just remove that and and you can get the light mounted. A handyman can do that, an electrician can do that. Um, a lot of the times you can do that if you if you're uh, handy enough. You go to YouTube like I do, YouTube University graduate here. I learn everything about taking care of my house from YouTube, so you can definitely do that. Another thing to, to take into consideration is uh, not you, there's not always gonna be outdoor um, receptacles. So 
that's another upgrade to look at is, is have the wiring run to the outside of the house so you have electricity in areas outside the house where you're gonna need it. Maybe on a deck, maybe in the, you know, in extras in the garage, um, you know, on the outside, on, you know, on the far side of the, on this one side of the house where it's gonna be really difficult to run an electric cord if you need electricity on that side, you know, maybe for uh, Christmas lights or something that time of year. Just have those put into place from day one. Again, you're gonna be happy you did it. Another thing to consider is if you, you know, with, with everybody moving to electric vehicles, have an electrical vehicle charging station installed. That is going to be very beneficial, especially for you if you already drive an electric vehicle. But if you're going to buy one in the future, it's, it's going to be a lot less expensive to have one installed right up front or have it pre-wired so it's be ready for an EV charging station from day one instead of going in, ripping walls out and adding electricity, adding the wire behind the wall at a later date. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about are these are more are larger items. These are gonna be your structural components of the house. These are gonna be things that you're not gonna be able to do on a later date, or you can, but it's gonna be much more uh, expensive and it's gonna be like, it's gonna just gonna be difficult. You gotta get permits, you gotta find contractors, you gotta get in line, because good contractors are booked out a year. So plan ahead for what you're gonna need for that home and do those structural options from day one. And by structural options, I'm talking about like an extra room or a third car, a third parking spot in the garage or a bump out on the side of the house to make the living room a little larger or maybe an extra bedroom. Those are things that when you're putting your house together, you're making your dream home, your new build, those are the things that you need to take into consideration. You gotta be looking down the road. And again, you can add these things down the road if you want, but a lot of the times it's not gonna look as nice. I like to call these houses, and I know you've all seen them, I call them the Frankenstein houses because they're just a mismatched wreck of different uh, add-ons, different upgrades to their house throughout the years that just don't match. They just are ugly. Hopefully, if there's one on the screen right now, I found you an example as I was just driving down the road. They, you, you don't want a Frankenstein house. If you do it up front, the builder's gonna make it actually look really good. It's gonna blend into the house. It's all gonna go together. Uh, resellability is going to be much better. You're going to be much happier. And again, it's much cheaper just to do it up front rather than having to tear down the side of your house to add an extra, you know, add an extra bedroom five years, 10 years down the line. If you would have just planned it from day one to have that done. All right. And the last thing we're going to talk about in today's video kind of goes along with the structural components is finish the basement. Cause a lot of the times, in the new contracts, in the, or in the new build contracts, that number that you're seeing on the website does not include a finished basement. You're gonna have to pay for that, it's gonna be extra. But if you want the finished basement, which I suggest you do, before you, you know, complete the rest of your house, uh, get that done right away, because it's always possible to uh, refinish a basement, have an empty basement, and get it finished later on, it's gonna be, you know, it's just gonna be a bigger hassle. You're gonna get the permits. You're gonna have to find again, find the contractor, stand in line with the con a good contractor. They're gonna, you're gonna have construction material coming through your house. It's, you know, you're gonna have drywall, paint, everything, you know, getting on the floors. It's better to just do it from day one and get it over with. But if there was one thing I would tell you to skip on this list, it would be finishing the basement. And I'm not saying that you know you sh you shouldn't do that but for example if that's one thing that you need to cut to save money as long as you do not have to use it right away for example like if you're a younger family you want to buy a new build you have maybe a newborn or, and maybe another kid uh, and you don't necessarily need the basement yet it's just going to be for storage maybe just leave it blank and, and, and use it as storage for now. And as your family grows and as you grow into the house, then you can start finishing the basement. You know, you can do it slowly. You can add the walls, you can add the flooring. Um, you know, you, you don't have to do it all at one time. And then you can kind of grow into the house and add equity yourself. Again, maybe you don't have to do everything. You can have the drywall and you can have the flooring come in and then you, got, you can do all the painting. You can make your kids do it or something like my parents did. You know, so those are things to, to keep in mind. They're like, if you don't necessarily need it, if you need to cut some costs to get into a new house, um, I would say the one thing is 
you can leave the basement unfinished because you can grow into the house, grow into the space, and you can get instant equity in the house. But just remember, if you're gonna go sell the house, most buyers are gonna to wanna to have to see a finished basement. So if it doesn't have a finished basement, that's gonna take a lot of the buyers out of like looking at your home. Um, but there, there always is, or there always are people looking for unfinished basements. Like that's what I would look for. Uh, because I don't necessarily need the basement uh, yet in, in this stage of life. But in, and it's something I could add as I go on and, and, add, and add value to my house through sweat equity or whatever um, and not have to pay for that cost up front. All right, so that's all I have for you on today's video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please hit that like button because it really does help the algorithm. It does put this video in front of more people that are sitting there Googling the same things you're Googling and now you ended up on this page. You know, it's, it'll help them uh, learn about new construction and moving to the DC, uh, DC metro area. So again, if you're looking to buy or sell or uh, look at new construction in this area, Please feel free to give me a call. My number's on the screen, 703-577-1454. Uh, reach out. I'd be happy to help you guys talk you through um, how, to, how to make the best decision for you and your family and answer any questions you have about living in and moving to this area in particular. So please reach out. And if you're looking for another video to watch on this channel, I would recommend going and watch this video, which is going to be the things to avoid when you are having a new construction built because not all updates are good. So go check out that video. We'll see you over there.